All right, it is time to add some blinks to this guy. And blinks are usually pretty easy. So let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna go to the eye. And I normally like to put the blinks directly on the eye. So I've got the eye swap one, right? And that's just the default eye. Um, actually, sometimes I do add separate eyelids, which I guess I will do. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'll do it this time. All right, so here's the eyeball. The, the uh, eyelid is gonna be in front of the pupil, so I'm gonna go Control R, eyelid. Do I want separate eyelids for the top and the bottom? Yep. Eyelid underscore up, eyelid underscore down. I will do synced layers for this. So I'm gonna add one more layer. I'm gonna call it eyelid underscore sync. I like to keep it capital so it's easy to find. Tip I got from a friend. All right, so let's go and turn this into bitmap. Eyelids comp. And this is going to be here. So it'll be in front of, it'll be behind the line art layer. All right. Then I'm gonna add pegs to these, Control Shift P. And then I'm gonna add a master peg, Control P. And I'll call that eyelids dash MP. And then I'm just gonna plug this in, even though it's not gonna have anything on it, it's just, so that it doesn't mysteriously grab onto something else because it doesn't have anybody to hang out with. All right, so I'm going to insert a backdrop, eyelid sync. Just want to label it so people don't have to wonder about it. And I'm going to move the brow over. And now I can add a backdrop here. Again, I set a shortcut, but you can always go to insert backdrop. Color this orange. And eyelids. Okay, I think I want this to come right here. And now it's time to draw. Okay, so the eyelid color, I will probably use this same color potato dark. I'm going to go straight across. Just holding shift. I was able to do that. Um, come on. All right. So I've got that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press K. Oh, I'm on the overlay layer. I want to be on the line art layer. I'm going to press V to show to, to draw an invisible stroke. Just draw, draw it like this. I'm going to add some extra points with my contour editor, Alt Q, add some points here, add some points here, add some points here. Then I'm going to paint bucket, Alt Y. This is going to be maybe potato spots. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Just want it to be a different color. I don't want it to be the normal skin color. I think that'll look nice. Um, all right, I'm going to copy that. Actually, I'm going to cut that and paste it on the color art layer. Now I'm going to go to line art. I'm going to use this, apply line, apply to line and color art. So now when I make a selection, it's going to select the lines, color, over, overlay, underlay, all that stuff. I'm going to copy this. Actually, I'm going to cut this, paste it on the eyelid down. And I'm going to copy this, paste it on the eyelid up. And then I am going to rotate it, and I'm going to go up, 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 up. I'm holding shift and pressing up, 
Holding shift makes it go faster in bigger jumps. And there we go. And actually, I'll just drag select so the strokes and everything come up. Okay. So this is what I want. And it looks weird. But now the default behavior that I want to happen is the eyelids are not going to be visible. I'm going to go to the eyelid sync. Now, something kind of cool that I can do. So I'm going to select all three of these and I'm going to choose in the timeline selection only mode. So I'm just looking at those three layers, which is nice. Um, these two have a drawing named one. I need to make a drawing named one for the eyelid sync. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift or I'm going to select both of these, the eyelid up and eyelid down, and I'm going to go node sync layer width, and then I'm going to say eyelid sync. So I can type in here. In Harmony 20, they added a typing search feature. Thank goodness. And now I can use the bracket keys to swap it off and on. All of them will swap off and on at the same time. All right, so let's call this, um, let's name it, let's call it five. Or no, let's not call it a number because Harmony defaults to calling things numbers. I want people to know I intentionally named it this. So I am going to call it E, so A, B, C, D, E. So that's equivalent to five, right? All right, I am going to make sure that this stuff is only being shown on eye color art. So I'm copy and paste that reveal and bring this over. Let me bring this down a little bit. Okay, so that's showing up there. And uh, now what I want to do is I want to, um, I think I, I think I want to add some curvature to this. I should have done that before I added all that stuff. Meh. I'll, I'll show you what I'm trying to do. One at a time, I'm going to add a display, control Y, switch to that display. Okay, now I'm going to add deformers. I'll start here on this side, come over to this side, up, up, oh man, I restarted Harmony and it always defaults to doing bones and you can't close it, so I gotta delete it and use an envelope deformer like I meant to do. And then I will go up here. Here, hold Alt to close it, hold Alt to break that as a corner, just kind of making this work this way. I usually like to make it take up a third, right? A third of the line. And I did not start with any curvature, like a blink down or a blink up. Um, I'm just going to do this. Uh, when you make it straight to start off with, you can bend it either way that you want to go. If you start it curved already and you try to bend it the other way, sometimes it starts to break. So that's the reasoning there. Now I'm going to add deformers. Now, where did I add the first point? The first point was over on that side. Okay. So now I want to add the first point over on this side just so there's not like this big jumbled up mess happening. Hold Alt to complete that. And this time I think I'm actually going to not have them take up quite as much room, not a third. It's less than a third. I just don't want when the, the eyes are blinked shut, I don't want them overlapping like crazy. Let me just show you what I mean. See, you've got that and that, and you've got these handlebars. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on right there. I think I will actually move one of them further out than the other. So that one I'll move further out 
this one I'll move further out there even though it's past the end of the line it's gonna help me just so I can access this stuff groovy all right now I'm going to get rid of this display because I don't need it anymore so here's what's cool when I have this eye I can I can do whatever I want like you can be really happy you can bring this down you can look tired so I've got a lot of options with an eye like this all right that is not the end now what I want to do is I want to make um, another set of eyelids so I am going to duplicate this E control shift D and duplicated it so you see there's now swap one I'm going to rename this to A control D to rename and now I am going to um, oh darn <laughs> I forgot to add a transformation group. So anyways, let me try that uh, before I do. Sorry, bouncing around. I am going to use select all, apply the line of color art. I'm going to move this up. So this is the first blink, which is no blink. Eyelid down, select that, put it here, no blink. Okay, uh, move it down so it's not visible at all. Holding shift and pressing down. All right, there we go. So this is the first swap. And then if I swap close, that's how it's working there. Now I am going to, um, I'm gonna copy this first pose further down the timeline normal view mode, press zero to collapse everything. I want this front facing potato and I'm gonna paste it over here, 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 here. I'll actually get rid of these for right now. So this first one has the eyes wide open and then the, the last one is going to have the eyes shut. So I just use the, um, the shortcut key bracket key to swap between these I could simply click on these drawing substitutions all right next up I want to do something in the middle so let me just move these so that they're next to each other okay now I am going to duplicate this again so duplicate this and maybe I should go so that you can see what's going on with all three of these again um, I'm going to do tag layers and then I'm going to tag these. So tag, timeline tag. All right. So I'm going to duplicate A and I'm going to call it C. I'm going to hide these deformers. All right. So eyelid down, select all, control A. And then this is going to be um, halfway linked. Same with the eyelid up, selected. It's going to be like halfway blinked. So we go forward. Okay, that does look pretty close to a halfway blink. Now I'm going to get out of this mode, go back to normal view mode. I'm going to press zero. I'm going to spread these apart by pressing plus, plus. Now you see these tweens, the tweens are doing nothing because I didn't keyframe those. I actually moved the art with the art moving tools, not the transform tool. And that is intentional. I want to be able to use the bracket keys to do a quick blink. It's very helpful to be able to do that without having to mess with deformers. So now I am gonna come here and I am going to go back to this view, view tagged layers. Okay, so I've got, and you'll notice, look at this, when you click on one of these things that synced, it shows a, a three red bars. Also, there's this little lock, this chain, 
and then also there's these two little dots if you're looking in the node view. So there's a lot of indicators to let you know that it's linked, synced. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna select all that stuff. And this is gonna be just starting to blink. Okay, so it's like an ease into a blink. So it's gonna be like that. And then the last one is gonna be easing out of a blink. So I'm actually gonna copy the last one. So copy this, paste it here. Now notice that there's this line between them, even though they're the same swap. It's called a duplicate key exposure. And I kind of want it right now, but if you had a bunch of duplicate key exposures, you could click on this little button, which is the K minus remove duplicate key exposure, and it gets rid of any of those duplicates. But it's actually pretty handy with what I'm about to do. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna press duplicate, which is this button, Alt-Shift-D. So now I've got a swap called two. I want it to be called um, D. So this is gonna be just barely starting to open. So I'm gonna use my select tool, control A, select all, open this just a little, go to the other eyelid, select all, control A, open it just a little, holding shift and up. Okay, so I can access all of those. I still need to name this one, I forgot to. This should be B, control D, capital B. All right, so now, here's what's great. Here I am, and I can use my bracket keys to simply swap a good fast blink. And uh, I want to put a little indicator here, because right now I can't see those uh, eyelids. So what I want to do is I'm going to choose eyelid up, maybe. I'm going to choose line art, I'm going to select the line, I'm going to paste it on the overlay, and then I'm going to tell, um, tell it what I want to do here. Alright, I want the overlay and visibility, so I'll copy those, paste them here. And I will Hook those up. Oh wait, I want the visibility underneath the overlay. Okay, I probably need some more space here. And I want what's called a layer selector. I'm going to press enter and bring up a layer selector. Layer selector is pretty cool because you are able to select whichever of these four that you want. So I actually want the line art and color art. I don't want the overlay or the underlay. I'm gonna abbreviate this LS. And I'm gonna add prefixes to all these. I would, oh. Let's scoot it over to make way for the prefix, the the character later on. PTO, potato. Okay, I think I still need to set some pivots on all these two. All right, so what I want to happen here is I want to be able to see um, something to give me the idea that I can swap those. So I want to switch that to the handle. I think I want it to be a lot smaller. This direction and that, oh, that's really tiny. I don't want to, have to zoom in that far. Okay. And I think I'm just gonna make it overlap here. It doesn't matter exactly where it is as long as I can access it and click on it. And now I'm actually going to um, press that shortcut control shift C and it like outlines the stroke. That way it's not dependent on stroke weight anymore. 
All right, so it's kind of going to blend in nicely for me, but what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to click on it and then I can just start swapping. So I'm not clicking on it to, to move it around really, though I could. It's just there for me to swap. And then the deformers, I only want deformers to be on this drawing on E. So in order for me to do that right now, the deformers are available for all of them, but that's a little weird when it's like that. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go to anything that's not E and I'm going to click on the hammer, click on plus, come on, click on the drawing, click on the plus. Well, let me do it over here. It won't. Okay, well, I know how to set it up manually, which is annoying, but I'm just going to group this and I'm going to call it one. Actually, I'm, I'm going to show you guys. Um, it took me a long time to get used to knowing how to do this. I'm going to go into another deformer group. I'm trying to set this up. I want it to look like this, so it's ready to take more than one kind of deformer chain. And it automatically sets this up if you do the hammer and the wrench and you press that plus. I'm manually have to, having to make it. So I'm going to press enter, type in transformation switch, bring it in, hold alt. Um, the default is supposed to come into there. And then this one comes in here. Okay, so now, now this guy is ready to um, to work. Oh yeah, <laughs> I need to show you guys how to do transformation switch. Okay, that one no longer has um, has the transformation with it. I'll show you why. All right, so transformation switch, you click in here and it says um, this chain, number one, it has these drawings that are associated with it. Now, I just barely put this in so it doesn't know anything about my drawing names. So watch what I can do. I can click on the drawing down here in the timeline and then I can choose here that I want to associate it with transformation one. Watch what happens in the transformation switch layer properties. It's supposed to save it there. I'm going to go type it in E semicolon enter. All right. So now if I show the, the deformers, this is eyelid up. I'm just going to do it with both of them. This one needs a trans. Oh, this one already has a transformation switch. Good for it. Okay, so this one is going to be E, and the other one is going to be E. So yeah, they should both show their deformers when I click my little shortcut. So the eyelid down is working, it's just the eyelid up is not working. Okay, so let me just see why. So the eyelid up should be playing with E. I did make this manually, so maybe there's something wrong with the way that I did it. Tell you what, to me, it's worth just redoing it. So I'm gonna go Control Y, hook it up to that. This time I'm gonna make the deformer correctly, hammer and wrench, click Create New Deformation Chain, um, and then I want to see through display too. And I am going to, oh, I don't wanna, Put it on the wrong side. Okay, yeah. I need to put it here on the left. It's, uh, I, I know, I bet that this is um, making this even longer than what you want to see, but this is a common problem that happens that you want to be aware of. Hold Alt to close that, adjust these after, hold Alt to break that. Alt to break this, Alt to break this. It really didn't take too long. Hold Alt to put this down here. I want to make sure that they're not overlapping too bad. Make the 
this shorter. Or longer, one of the two. Now look, um, it already set up that deformation chain set up for me with multiple things so that I could add more than one if I want to. Man, I bet you that this one's going to be a confusing thing to you guys. I'm sorry. Okay. So, with the eyelids, I want them, when they're closed... Well, I think I'll just always have the pivots down here. Alright, so I'll select those drawing layers, Alt 3 move it down here I'll select this one all three oh I did it the wrong way this is the down and this is the up put it up here eyelids master peg I guess I could just go in the middle Okay, now watch, because I have these deformation chains, and it says that that deformer is only going to be buddies with the drawing named E. Okay, and then over here, this deformation chain is only going to be buddies with drawing named E. So what happens is, when I swap to a different drawing, these do not have deformers. And that's actually what I want. Because when I swap through, when they're finally closed, I have freedom to go ahead and make whatever kind of shape I want with the eyelids. But I don't need all of them to have deformers. I could add more to them if I wanted to, but I'm just going to leave them. So that is good for now. I'm going to go back to the very starting pose here. So A, that's the default, right? I want that to be on. And let's go back to our regular view, our regular display. Okay, so I've got that purple line. Now, I'm going to click the render view. Will that purple line show up? No, because what I've done is that purple line is sitting on the overlay layer, and then the visibility is saying, don't render it out, but do show it to me in OpenGL. So that is simply for me to click on to then swap through a blink cycle. And because that is so weird, maybe I should just write a note about it in the backdrop properties. I'll say um, eyelids swap a has an overlay purple selector handle um, to help you quickly swap through a blink cycle. And if anybody wonders, they can read that. Good. Okay, so now I've got this cool thing, and notice that when I click on it and I swap, it's just the first drawing that had that purple. I just needed it because the draw the eyelid is up there I could access it it's just I don't see it so I just wanted to give myself a little indicator okay so um, we've got that swap we've got these swaps um, now I need to make this eye so that it will work on the other side and maybe I should uh, name this um, better I've got pupil revealed on its eyelids revealed on on the color art of the eye. Bring it down so there's not a bunch of crisscross stuff going on. Maybe make the brow. Oh, while we're here, control W. Let me click on the waypoint. Let's make another uh, eyebrow. So sometimes uh, we could get most of what we want from this, but what if I want like, more of like a check mark eyebrow that's like a really grumpy looking one? Let me show you how I would handle that. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get out of this uh, view tagged layers thing. Find the brow. 
And I'm going to press zero. I'm going to copy this front pose again. Um, I'm going to, oh, I'll go here. Yeah, I can swap back and forth to see. All right, with this one, I'm going to go down like angry. Actually, that looks just fine. I don't think I even need a check mark. But I'll show you how I do it in case you're curious. All right, so I angle it down first, it's, and, and maybe I even bring it down a little bit more like this. Maybe I bring it out a little bit. Okay, let me swap back and forth. Uh, that looks kind of hokey. That's... Okay, I'm gonna go peg selection mode so I can see all this stuff up here. Um, the scale got too big. I'm gonna go back to the scale of one and one. And I'll go zero on the skew. Okay, so that's what I've got. And I think it looks good enough, but I will show you how you can make an additional swap. I'm going to copy and paste this here so I can flip back and forth between those. Now here I'm going to I'm going to get out of peg selection mode so I can select the drawing layer itself. Um, notice how when I select the drawing layer it lights up blue but when I'm in peg selection mode and I select that it goes it jumps straight up to the peg and I can't swap when I'm on a peg so look if I click on the drawing I can swap if I click on the peg there's no way to swap because I'm not on a drawing layer alright so now what I want to do is I'm going to um, maybe I will duplicate no, I'm just going to create an empty drawing. I'm going to turn on my onion skin, Alt-O. I can see what was before. And now I'm going to use my um, pen. I want the, I'll go back, press D, finds that swatch for me. And uh, I'll go here. I'm actually going to use the stroke tool to make angry eyebrows. And then my contour editor to touch that up a little bit. And then Alt Y, paint bucket. Okay, so that, that got a little bit bigger, but the key is, is that you want it to rotate from the same spot the other one was rotating from. So that's that corner. And then uh, maybe it can grow a little bit, but maybe Maybe we just want to do something like this. doesn't look like the same character eyebrow anymore, but some cartoons can get away with that kind of thing. Um, to me, it's just not looking consistent. And the reason that you do this is just so you could quickly get another eyebrow that you use a lot. I, I kind of think that we don't really need it. I just want to show you the exercise. Okay. That works. And then the other thing that I want to do with the brow is I would probably want to add a, um, I'm going to add an invisible stroke up here. And then I'm going to paint it with the cutter swatch. And I'm going to put it on the underlay because that's what I like to use for cutting. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, I'm going to go to my layer abbreviation stuff. I want line art and underlay. Copy that, paste it. Oh, I need to name it something. There's another one that's not named. Okay. Prefix brow underscore. 
and then I'm going to use that again to remove the suffix of underscore one. I don't like it. Eh. Alt drag this into the cable. And then what this is going to do is it's going to cut the entire eye. So all of that. I need another comp. Control H. This is going to be eye and brow comp. Then I'm going to do a cutter. And I'm going to name it um, I cut by brow. And then the line art of the brow needs to plug in down below so it's not getting cut. Maybe I drew it on the wrong layer. So brow, let's go to the drawing layer, shift X to reset my view. Oh yeah, it's on the overlay. So cut it off of there, put it down here. Now watch what happens. Turn off the onion skin, alt O. So now when I bring it down, it's going to cut the eye. So I might as well, while I'm at it, go back and do it to this one as well. So let's see, line art. And I want this to cut Alt Y, cut, paste it. And now that can do the same thing too. All right, so now I'm going to um, reset that peg, and I know that I've I've got it all built out now, and I've got a quick angry swap if I ever want to use it. I don't think I will. I don't think it looks very good. Um, I think it needs kind of, in order for it to look like it belongs, it needs that to be pointy. Oh yeah, maybe that works. And this needs to be pointy. And this needs to be gone. And it's pretty much just like, why didn't I just use a deformer? <laughs> but the point is, is if you're using it a lot, it's worth making a swap. So let's see. Well, it lost some of its uh, size, didn't it? I'm, I apologize. I know this is probably taking more time than what you'd like to see. Swap. That's better. Yeah, I think it's kind of maintaining its size a little bit better now. Get a little bit more curved to make it more interesting here. You know, sometimes it's better to just do a sketch. <laughs> I'm fiddling with this so much. Uh, and then the cutter is not in the right place anymore. Let me just adjust that. So I am on the, the underlay layer. I can't see it, but I can see the vector points that it is dealing with. Let me just say that everything underneath that gets cut. All right, I'm just gonna leave it at that. It, it doesn't need it anyway in my opinion. Okay, so now I need to get this eyebrow stuff all copper, copied over because I've didn't done quite a bit of building in here. They call this engineering. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to come out of this 
and this is the new one. So I'm going to call this one iClone underscore previous. I'm going to take this one and clone it. I've got a little script that changes the one to a clone. Move it over, plug it into the same place it used to be plugged in. Oh, but now that one's not plugged in. So I'm just going to plug it in somewhere else just so I can copy the stuff while I'm trying to migrate everything. Save. Don't want it to crash on me. Okay, so I clone previous. So all of this stuff. Copy. And then paste special because I have a different number of layers. I need to paste special and choose match by node layer name. All right, it brought the little highlight over. If I disconnect the iClone previous and now I scrub through, I'll see that I got all my keyframes that came through. All the posing stuff is still doing the right thing. So now I can delete that iClone previous and put this back in the proper place. See you soon.